All right, hello, hello. So, 24 hours again before the Cologne officially starts with the player bracket. And, well, let's have a look what we can, what we can get from this. Um, let's start with the Vitality against Cloud9. And the first thing we have to look at is obviously the map pool and in this case, if we know what to expect from Vitality, then we have no clue what to expect from uh, from Cloud9 with the XL coming back. Uh, obviously, we've seen that uh, they were pretty decent on Anubis, and they had a couple of, uh, I'd say, practiced moves. But on the other side, Anubis for Vitality is also one of the strong maps, but... Uh, on the good side for Cloud9 is that they have enough information to actually explore and see what counterplay they can offer to uh, to Vitality's game plan if they decide to go for the uh, for the Anubis pick. Um, anything other than that seems quite weird. However, the other side is that Overpass might be a pick for Cloud9 um, because obviously Perfecto and Electronic played for uh, for some time in Navi, and the overpass wasn't the best, but it was okay. And Cloud9 were obviously decent as well on the overpass. So the other thing is that uh, there's a good chance that Vitality might be uh, actually beaten on the on the on the overpass by Cloud9. So I'd assume that for for Cloud9, overpass is a great pick. Uh, Vertigo, once again, um, I didn't really like the Vertigo that uh, they played in Cologne, uh, neither against Fnatic or Nine. That seemed quite odd, but uh, I assume it's uh, only for the reason that Booster was uh, playing some of Exile roles, and uh, obviously when he was lurking or when he was holding the side, uh, he was not able to provide as much of a proper game game plan as uh, Axel would uh, in those positions. Because one of the moments is that, uh, just s stick to my mind, is when Booster was uh, lurking towards B and was uh, again upstairs and he didn't even check the, the wood. Uh, it's like, on those late timings, you just have to check the wood but he, he never bothered to check it. So that was one of the kind of crucial things of uh, like actually describing how Booster was playing in those roles. So um, that's the second map that's potentially going to be good for, for Cloud9 in this matchup. Um, Inferno, I don't like Inferno pick on the either of the sides. Um, Mirage... Cloud9 and Mirage is just a horrible, horrible pair up. Um, Ancient is permanent band for Vitality, obviously. Nuke is permanent band for, for Cloud9. So in terms of uh, map picks that uh, Vitality can go for, probably going to be Anubis. And for the, for the Cloud9, most likely it's going to be overpass and I'm not going to be surprised if we're going to see Vertigo as decider and this is uh, a decent um, free maps for either teams and my expectation that this match will go all free maps and I kind of low he hope that uh, Cloud9 is going to take it but I'm not sure and in this in this Cologne bracket, I just, you know, I will go for the for the Cloud Nine uh, gamble anyway, because uh, I saw some tendencies that I really really liked, and Vitality obviously now they're not in the best shape. Um, yes, uh, Majesk is playing good, Zaivu is obviously playing on his level, uh, Flames can be countered by uh, Cloud9 and let's be honest, Cloud9 right now is probably what uh, what Nico was always uh, dreaming about, where you have no weak links, where your where your IGL is 
easily outfrag everyone on the server on a on a decent day. So electronic is probably what Nico wanted to be when he was uh, IGLing. That's uh, that's the sum up that I have right now regarding the Cloud9 lineup. And once again, I'm gambling on Cloud9 on this one. So I will be picking Cloud9. And in, if you look at my PKMs, uh, I went with this Cloud9 all the way to the final. And on the other side, I went with Heroic all the way to the lineup, uh, to the final. Right, because uh, once again, mm -hmm. if we look at the Astralis matchup, and if we once again look at the maps, um, Astralis, they don't really have the advantage on on best of free grounds. Yes, uh, they can win like Ancient, let's say, which I doubt, but there's still a chance. They potentially can win Vertigo. But other than that, um, they lose in every single map and the best case scenario for Astralis is going to be 2-1, right, for for Heroic. But uh, at the end of the day, I'm expecting 2-0 for, uh, for Heroic. I don't think that Astralis at this point are ready to actually contest uh, for the for the top two. Um, in terms of uh, semi-final matches, uh, Cloud9 versus Ens, this is going to be a really, really tough match. Uh, for for both teams, and obviously there's no there's no stats yet, but uh, once again, uh, the map pool is going to be interesting, um, and only because we have no idea how Cloud Nine going to play certain maps, uh, we can't really decide. <laughs> but once again, ends are really strong right now. They found the chemistry and. I won't be surprised if Ants win the whole thing. On the other side, Heroic versus G2. Um, G2 have really good chance to beat Heroic. Um, if we consider that uh, G2 are improving the individual game right now, and if it's going to be a good day for Hooksy and he's not going to be 0 0.45 rating, um, Nico wakes up, Monosy does his thing. Hunter is in good shape at this event. JKS is just being stable. This matchup can obviously go all three maps as always. Maybe with the two maps on OT. Not going to be surprised to see that. And in general, uh, I'm expecting a nail biter. And if everything goes according to how I expect, then Cloud9 should be facing Heroic. And once again, three maps easily, but this is going to be best of five. So are we going to see five maps? I don't know. In terms of uh, best of five for, for current Cloud9, do they have five maps that they can play at the highest level? <sighs> I don't know. That's quite a quite a big question mark. And if they get to the final, then they probably will have to win in four maps. Because if they're gonna face heroic, most likely they're gonna lose on a distance. If they're gonna face G two, same thing again, right? On a distance, right now there's a chance that. Uh, G2 or Heroic is going to outlast them. But um, let me just double check uh, the maps that we have the information about. Anubis, playable. Ancient, playable. Vertigo, with Axel doing his roles, playable. Inferno, 50-50. Uh, Mirage, horrible pick. Overpass, playable. Potentially can, can win. Nuke, insta ban. So let's say there's not going to be nuke. And against G2, I don't know. 
what okay let's say what is hero gonna gonna perma ban uh, anti banning the yeah ver anubis yeah I don't I don't see how Cloud9 gonna beat uh, Heroic over there. However, if they face G2, they do have a good chance. So if I'm going with a narrative that Cloud9 is gonna take it all, then I have to kind of hope that uh, G2 gonna beat Heroic in the semifinal and that G2 uh, gonna give a, a chance to Cloud9 to actually show what they're capable of. And well, Let's build a team around it. So obviously, because I expect that uh, Cloud9 gonna take you all, Shiro and Axile. I will go for both of them. Uh, however, not the, not the brightest idea. And if you're gonna join me in this uh, in this path, um, I'd recommend you to to go for Hobbit, maybe Electronic, but like most likely Hobbit. Because uh, he can be the X Factor, right? And 205k, decent price. The fact on the other side is 204. A bit too much in my books. Because uh, electronic might be might be worth actually the price. So even if we pick electronic, then we have pretty much enough money. So once again, I have the G2 narrative that uh, they can go all the way up to the final, and I hope they do. In this case, I need to hope for maybe Mondesi to actually do pretty well, and then I'll have 187k left, which uh, isn't really enough to get me another carry player, So, which means that I'll have to get rid of Mondesi. And Hunter has been great during this event, so maybe he's going to have a great series against uh, against heroic and he's going to be that that carry right uh, on the other side um, heroic uh, most likely to win the, the first game and jabby's pretty much great uh, great pick for them um, i hope that jabby is not going to screw up but uh, there's always a chance uh, this is kind of lineup that potentially gonna uh, gonna be a good contender, but this is not what I'm gonna gamble for. Um, I hope that Axile gonna come in strong, and I'm going all in for for Axile and Shiro, because why not? If I win, I win. If I lose, I lose. So, and my last final piece is gonna be Maiden because. He's gained me three points. So pending points, pending points, and I hope for Shiro and Axel to go to go nuclear. Like maybe like picking Axel right now is not the best idea because he's not gonna be prepared probably for the uh, for the game straight away. But he arrived yesterday, so today he has uh, a day off, kind of. He can like have some sleep, and they can get back to work, right? And tomorrow they're gonna play the game. So if Axel is in a, is in a good shape and he actually had some proper sleep, and he will have proper sleep probably next night, so um, he might be ready for for some show. And at this point, uh, let me just log this. In terms of roles, op, noob, defender, multifrag, and echo friendly, because. Uh, <sighs> I don't know what other role to put on uh, on Maiden right now because, like, obviously I'm not gonna put him as a leader because uh, I don't expect them to win, and all the all the other roles are kind of taken. Like, and eco friendly, well, yeah, he does play with SMGs quite often, so uh, might might be the right pick. And if we look at the event overview and we look at the most picked players, then obviously Apex and Hooksy are. On top of the leaderboard, and then heroic alongside with uh, Hunter and Hooksy, which obviously I in my team as well, and kind of 50% of the teams. So 
even if uh, G2 kind of lose the the semi-final then I still have a pretty decent chance with the with the cloud nine if they go all the way to to get me decent points uh, probably heroic are the the best team in terms of value right now and yeah we can expect them to go all the way through as well and finally they didn't really have the perfect group stage which means they might have a good run in the playoffs right because most of the time they have a perfect run in a in a group stage and then screw up playoffs so maybe this time is going to be the other way around who knows um in terms of the cct finals everything is going exactly how expected uh, even so beating og but uh, yeah at the end of the day this is what they care about and yeah uh, once again um let's look at the boosters and shiro as always top of the scoreboard Hoxie bomb of the scoreboard uh, hunter assists uh, exile against vitality there's really good chance that he's gonna get uh, maybe ace or quadra kill and maiden gonna get baited most of the time um in terms of my booster game um let me just show you that over here three out of three um previously 37 points on boosters so uh, my boosters are pretty much okay and i'm averaging like 35 to 40 points on boosters on average so uh if you aiming to something similar then don't be scared to apply to apply boosters early because at the end of the day you might not even use them because uh, your team potentially might not even make it so it is what it is and yeah 35 37 40 points and i'm expecting similar over here cct north europe um 22 because obviously i after uh after they lost that was quite irrelevant and yeah i kind of gave up on this one but in in actual games where what we care about uh, the average points on boosters is 37 so i'm okay with that role wise at the moment it's kind of tough after the role changes and yeah some roles are quite weird uh, to hit one game the player gets zero points next next game player gets five points on the rolls so I'm not sure if the roles need the adjustments or I just have to be a, more, a bit more careful. Um, so yeah, that's it. My prediction is that I hope that Cloud9 is taking it all and I will be going for the gamble because uh, the early early season is probably the best time to go for the, for the gamble, right? It never went wrong. <laughs> all right. Um, good luck, everyone, and have fun.